Hi everyone, welcome to the Meta Entrepreneurship course. We are very excited to introduce you to our new course here. Uh, my avatar name is Dahlia. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to mention that we are working as a team in this course. And I would like to briefly introduce you to our faculty over here. Uh, each uh, faculty has assigned roles and afterwards we will be talking about those two. Apart from me, who is the, I'm the leader of the course, uh, we have Magua here, Professor Gunmas in real life. Uh, he, uh, we have a side arm here, uh, his real life name is James. And we have our course assistants here. We have Gigi and Ginger, uh, most of you know them. Uh, they are Gulay Oja and uh, Arsene Oja. And today also we have a guest, the librarian Greg uh, Val. You'll be meeting with her next week. We have a session with her. And uh, throughout the semester, our course will take place within the Second Life platform as we do today. And for today's class, uh, we have designed this class to uh, getting, know, uh, getting to know each other and explaining the details of the course. So I will be mentioning you about the details of the course. Then we will have a team session uh, with SciTarm. Then we will be talking about the details of the project of this course. Um, and uh, today, I know that some of you has taken already the ISP class, the International Student Project class, the virtual world, and uh, you are very familiar to this world and many things we do here. Uh, but some of you are new and you haven't experienced Second Life before. Uh, so I would like to briefly talk about Second Life platform and, uh, and very briefly talk about meta entrepreneurship and how you're going to uh, the expected benefits of taking this course. Uh, so, uh, this course is designed to provide you an entrepreneurship experience in Metaverse, which is Second Life for here. Entrepreneurship is important because it contributes to job creation, growth, and competitiveness, and it unlocks the personal potential. So, for the development of the idea of entrepreneurship, the virtual uh, world is becoming increasingly important. And I guess some most of you already know that because there is a lot of interest for this course. Um, meta entrepreneurship refers to creating and managing businesses within virtual reality environments, uh, which will be specifically second life for this course. And as you have uh, experience uh, from the ISP class from last year, the metaverse is a shared virtual space where users can interact with each other in a digital world using their avatars. So this course will introduce you through an understanding of business practices in Metaverse, and you will be able to explore all the resources available in Second Life platform for Meta entrepreneurs. And you will be creating your own virtual products, and you will be creating a brand identity for them by the end of this course. So the aim of the course is to show you a deep understanding of the entrepreneurship in Second Life. And to achieve this goal, we will be delivering you all the meta strategies and knowledge you will benefit uh, to create your own product and build your product and discover ways how you can deliver superior value to your customers with your brands. Um, as you should already be aware of, the meta entrepreneurship is on the rise and it's an exciting development in the world of business. As a new form of entrepreneurship, uh, meta entrepreneurship is becoming increasingly popular due to the growing recognition of the metaverse platforms, which are seen as very valuable for both commerce and social interaction. And also for those who are new to Second Life platform, let me tell you why we are using Second Life shortly. Second Life is one of the earliest and most well-known virtual world platforms, uh, and it's referred to as a metaverse. It's a 3D virtual world where users using their avatars in a very widely spread landscape. Avatars can explore many different digital locations, interact with each other, uh, even create or trade uh, virtual that properties. Is, yeah. So every user in Second Life has an avatar, which is customizable digital representation of oneself. And you can change your appearance, clothing, and other attributes. Using the in-world building tools, the residents here can design and construct virtual buildings, landscapes, and other objects. 
And here Second Life has its own virtual economy with its currency called the Linden Dollar. You can, uh, the users can uh, buy Linden Dollars with real money, spend them in the world on a variety of services, goods, and even virtual from virtual estate to clothing for their avatars. Uh, Second Life is a home to very different uh, events, classes, and activities, from concerts to art galleries, from educational seminars to yoga classes. There is a very diverse range of uh, things to do here. And many institutions and businesses have explored Second Life as a platform for education and professional activities. Universities have set up virtual campuses like we do here, and businesses have experimented with virtual offices and meetings. And Second Life was developed and maintained by the company called uh, Linden Lab and was officially launched in 2003. And its user database is fluctuating over the years, uh, but it still remains as a notable example uh, for the virtual world platform. And we know that there are a lot of, lot of different newer platforms, but this, despite the uh, emergence of other platforms in the field of virtual worlds, Second Life still continues to be important because of the history of, of becoming the first year and the variety and the uh, range of users generated experiences it provides. So let me tell you about the benefits you are going to get from taking the Metro Entrepreneurship course. You can see at the slide behind you. First of all, we are planning to give you an immersive learning experience here. You will be able to benefit from all the theoretical aspects of entrepreneurship, which we are going to discuss in each week, each classes every week. So we will be teaching you traditional academic learning, but you will be combining it with the virtual world experience education. So this will help you to also prepare yourselves for the constantly evolving environment of modern entrepreneurship. Uh, using safe simulation environment, so uh, students can engage in entrepreneurial activities, can test, test their ideas, open virtual businesses, and all the challenges you face in the virtual world, you will be facing them without the real world risks and costs associated with, for example, creating a startup. Creating collaborations and networking. Here, Second Life allows you to interact with peers, instructors, and even guest speakers or other entrepreneurs from around the world. So it's a global perspective and it's a collaborative approach. Also, creativity and innovation is a lot, has a lot to do with our course uh, because the virtual world is where you can use only your imagination and you can here just try new ideas, try to create your goods, services, business strategies. Uh, and those are the things that it's very difficult to do or maybe sometimes implement in the actual world. This is also a flexible platform uh, in terms of location and time. Uh, and it makes us to uh, more accessible to meet with each other, uh, maybe accessible for students from different geographical locations and schedules. So there are no geographical limits here. So this will allow you to reach a global audience very easily. And also this gives you, gives you an experience about cultural exchange too, because there are very diverse, diverse users, uh, users from all around the world. So you can engage with the community, uh, different communities here and have insights about the global markets and see the cultural differences. And those are very important for you while if you are implementing international business. Getting real-time feedback, uh, the Second Life virtual market and community provides you immediate feedback on entrepreneurial initiatives. So it, this also helps you to modify and develop your ideas easily. And by the way, you are using, using a, a technical platform, uh, in, internet technologies platform. So you, it, this will help you to develop your soft skills too. Um, and there you can improve your digital literacy here. As the world of technology becomes more important in business and in, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, your digital abilities and adaptability can benefit from navigating and achieving su success in platforms like Second Life here. So uh, Second Life brings a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs and within this course we are going to talk about them and we will try to show you how you can benefit from being a meta entrepreneur. Uh, and within the course, you will be uh, learning to create a virtual product, which we will be mentioning soon within this class. 
Uh, and also, I would like to tell you that uh, all the details of the course exist in our course syllabus, which you can find attached in the Chai University website. So please follow the weekly schedules. Uh, it's very important that you attend all the classes because each week we have different contents uh, and mostly with different speakers from both our faculty and outside. And you will be assigned to weekly tasks. Those assignments are expected to be delivered the next week. So it's important that you follow both the weekly schedules and attend all the class sessions. For this uh, course, we have a final project. Uh, so uh, no exams for this course, but a final project like we do in the ISP course, the virtual world. Uh, we call it as the final project and you will be graded over the final project and all the tasks that you accomplish. So these are briefly, let's say, the details of the course. Now I would like to uh, uh, give the mic to Saitarm and he is going to talk about the teamwork theory and, uh, and we will make a team session. This presentation will be given in English, but there is a translation that you can look at later from Google Translate. I'm going to present in English. So welcome to Teamwork Theory. I'm, if you don't see where I am, I'm right in front of you, except I'm sitting up here on top of my first slide. I'm going to go briskly because most of you have heard this. In today's presentation, we're giving you models, models for teamwork and collaboration not only for this class, but for the rest of your life. You will be able to diagnose where your team is working well or where your team needs work. The first part will be basics and pro tips. The second part is demonstrations of team meetings and team status checks. You've already done one of those. A team is two or more people working on a common objective. We've already done this part. For example, today you are in teams of two people, three people, four people, and five people. The more people in your team, the more complicated or complex it is. For two people, it's a complexity of one. There's only one way to talk to each other. For three people, there's already three ways to talk. For four people, there's six ways to talk. For five people, there's 10 ways to talk. The bigger the team, the more complex it is. That's why you have team leaders and communication coordinators. Teams can be one time or recurring. When you're done with this project, your teams will be over. So they were one time for the Meta Entrepreneurship Autumn 2023 course. But the faculty team we're going to have to keep meeting because we have Meta Entrepreneurship next year. That's a recurring team. Teams that you signed up for are voluntary, but teams that you're assigned to are involuntary. The teams you're in today are involuntary. We told you what team you're in. Nevertheless, what I tell you today will apply to simple teams, complex teams, one-time teams, and recurring teams. You can use this everywhere in your life. Team operations model from an analytical or systems analysis point of view, a team is a box 
with arrows. The inputs on the left are your team members. Also, how much time you have to put into this course. Also, your skills, what do you already know? And whatever materials you bring, like your computer and your internet connection and your brain. The arrow on the right are your outputs, which is going to be your project presentation, the things you invent and build, and the displays you build to show off your marketing plan and your product. The arrow on the top are the controls on your team, which are the assignments that Dahlia gives you and the limits on what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. And that's the project briefing that she's going to talk to you about next. The bottom arrow are the supports, the things that will help you get all this done. Your support are the classes you're taking, the extended faculty like Val who comes to talk to you, and me. My job today is to help you know how to run a good team yourself, no matter what your job is. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you brings an investment to the team based on what you already know how to do and whether you're willing to do it. Together, this makes your contribution to the team. Commitment is your level of dedication to the team objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of efficiency, expertise, what you know, and the role you play to help the team. It is what you know. This is a simple model. The red arrow is productivity, and the blue arrow are members, and the two factors are commitment and competence. High competence plus high commitment make high effectiveness. Low competence plus low commitment means low effectiveness. If either is medium, the effectiveness, your effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. Most of the time, individuals are medium effective on any one project due to constraints on their knowledge and their time. However, anything above zero from you is a win. The question is, for each team that you're on, what do you know how to do, and are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team as a group brings an investment to the project success based on how, how, well, how well your team members cover as many as nine different team roles. These include leading the team, idea generating, investigating parallel efforts, who else is doing something like us, detailed specialist knowledge, steadfast, steady, implementing, just keeping at it, filling in the gaps, filling in the gaps, ruthlessly tracking progress versus goal, no mercy, did we do it or didn't we? No mercy. Fine detailing, putting the dots on the I's and crossing the T's. And nine, coordinating the team, making sure everybody's got a chance to participate, etc. 
This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High coverage of the nine rolls equals high success. Medium coverage equals medium success. Low coverage equals low success. Most of the time on any one project, the team for that project achieves medium success due to one or more of the nine roles not being covered by one of the team members. However, anything above zero is a win. The question is, for each team you're on, each new project, what roles of the nine roles here don't you know how to do yet? And are you willing to learn them? Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is an opening exercise where new ideas are generated. Your next meeting today is going to be brainstorming. Deciding is a narrowing exercise where this choices are made and action begins. You're pretty early in the game to be deciding anything right now, but later on you're going to be deciding things. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided. Dahlia already briefed you today, on, and she's going to give a detailed briefing next. Debriefing is an opening exercise where you think about what just happened and what did you like and what did you wish. This is a simple model and it goes like this. Either you talk to make things more open and expand the options, more choices, or you talk to make things more closed, narrow the options, fewer ways to go. The ability to expand and the ability to narrow are both needed. Throughout this project, your team will go back and forth between opening up and closing down how you talk and how you work. You will need both of these all the way for a good team. The question is, in the current conversation, whatever you're doing right now, this instant, are you in an opening mode or a closing mode? Or is it time to switch? Effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. You've already started that today. That was your first assignment. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. We're about to have a meeting where you are going to be storming. Storming is important, necessary, unavoidable. It helps you move forward. Norming is where you get used to each other and start to agree on a plan and what to do. And performing is where you crank out the results. You make things happen. Throughout a project, your team will go back and forth and back and forth between these stages. You might get a new team member next week. Now you got to form again. You might have to brainstorm some more. You're going to storm again. Then you'll go back to norming and performing. Some of you may learn some new skills at the builder's classes. Whoa, now you can take on a new role. You'll be adapting improvising 
and overcoming up to and even during your final team presentation. The question is, for each change that comes up, each change that arises, is it okay to stick to the plan or do we need to do something different? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you're in a project called Meta Entrepreneurship 2023. Even when Meta Entrepreneurship is over, you will certainly be in some other team project. You already are in other team projects, even now, with your family, your friends, and other activities at school and work. Each time you are in a team project, you have the opportunity to have a growth cycle. You are listening to what is being asked of you today. Choosing how you're going to participate. Acting on your choice. And extending your personal ability to make things happen. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next? This ends the formal presentation on teamwork theory. Dahlia, over to you. Okay. Now let's talk about the project details. There is my slide for the Meta Entrepreneurship Project over here. So like I mentioned before, we are going to be building a virtual product. So what is a virtual product? A virtual product is a type of product that is digital, intangible, meaning there will be no physical presence for the product. It exists in only in the digital form and it can be often delivered electronically. So the aim of this project is to create and build a successful virtual product in Second Life. You will be designing ways to engage with your customers. That is very important. And you will be launching your, launching your virtual products in Second Life. While doing that, there are steps that you should follow throughout the semester for creating and building, building your virtual product. Uh, so uh, I will also talk about those two. So you will all be acting as meta entrepreneurs here a meta-entrepreneur is a person who creates new business opportunities, can create new teams, work in teams, has leadership characteristics, has a good understanding of the technology used inside, can use digital tools to build something, can start his or her own business, produce creative ideas, and wants to sell the product on metaverse platforms. So for this project, you will be all working with your teams. Each week you will have tasks assigned uh, and together with your team, you will be working on those. And uh, for the final presentation, again, as a team, you will be responsible for the uh, final project. And as Saitram explained, you all have different roles that are very important to achieve success for this project. So regarding the product idea you will have, this will be something, this can be something brand new to this physical, to, to this world, to virtual world, second life, or it can be a product idea uh, that has presence in physical world and your job will be to adapt it to second life. You can change its, its features, revise it, update it, add new features, create a brand new identity for it. For example, let's think about some product categories that are existing in physical life and in virtual, and, and let's see what virtual examples they have. For the fashion and accessories categories, what products do, are, do we have? There are designer clothes, there are shoes, bags, and jewelries in physical life. These are physical products. In the virtual world, the digital versions of these items for avatars to be wear in virtual social gatherings, events, or even virtual fashion shows. This can be a virtual product idea. You are converting the physical product into virtual one. 
for, for example, the furniture or home decorations, there are, let's say, tables, lamps, and artworks. You can create virtual furniture for designing and decorating virtual homes, offices, or spaces. For cosmetics and VET products, you know, in physical life, there are makeup products, perfumes, and skincare products, let's say. So you can create digital makeup or skins, uh, skin products that avatars can apply to change their appearances in virtual worlds. Another category, for example, fitness equipment. There are weights, treadmills, yoga mats. So you can, here we can create virtual gyms uh, where avatars can perform workouts, attend classes, or even participate uh, in virtual marathons. So there are very different product categories you can think of. Think of. Your task is going to your task is to um, modify them and build a new presence of them for the virtual world here. The key here is going to be creating a unique value proposition in the virtual world that that physical product can't offer. For instance, you can change uh, a digital dress's colors based on the user's moods or uh, let's think about a virtual plant that grows very instantly. So by improving the virtual products features, it becomes more than just a digital replication of a product. So you have to provide something more than that. That's not only creating something in the virtual world, but instead you have to deliver value to the users by uh, buying or using those products. That's important. And within the scope of this course, we will have content on every different aspect every week. So uh, the guest speakers and our faculty member here are going to show you a lot of things in from the second life. You are going to visit different destinations and you are going to see different communities that those are all, all very important for generating a product idea or just uh, building up a business in this world. So our goal here is to give you an understanding of the life happening here. So you will have to spend time here. Uh, you have to learn about how people live here, learn about their lifestyles, their habits, the habits of the residents and of, of, of the avatars, discover their needs and their expectations in the marketplace. And you have to, you'll be trying to find uh, the opportunities that will arise in the marketplace as a result of your observations and researches. So uh, the steps you have to accomplish for the final project is, first of all, uh, we will start by making a market analysis and you will be generating your product, virtual product idea. Uh, by analyzing the marketplace, you are going to see what are the current trends, what is demanded in the marketplace, and you, are going to tr you, are, you will be trying to find the gaps in the marketplace. So you have to identify uh, what users here are looking for. And with your team, you are going to brainstorm for ideas that will, product ideas that will satisfy the needs of the avatars that live here. So uh, that's the first step you are going to achieve. So for next week's tasks, which I'm going to be explaining uh, next, uh, you will be completing up your market analysis. But to do that, you will be visiting certain Second life destinations, you will be visiting the marketplace. You will have to maybe make some research online too. And with your team, you are going to uh, decide on your product idea after getting to know the marketplace here. Then another step is to determine your business objectives and you will have to define your target audience. So you have to outline what you're planning to achieve with your virtual product. So you may be planning to uh, generate sales here. You may put sales targets or branding objectives or just uh, maybe user engagement will be very important for you. So, and also profile your ideal customer who is going to purchase your product. Understand their behaviors, preferences, and needs in the virtual environment. Another important step is starting to build your product. We will be in the building sessions teaching you how to build objects in Second Life. So by that you have your you have you will be already uh, decided on your product idea, and to uh, build it you will be having building se sessions both in a class time and you will have additional sessions where you will have time to you'll have chance to experience building here with your supervisors. Another important topic content of the project is uh, we are not only creating a virtual product, but we are also. Uh, we, you will be also thinking about some features that should be added to a product. 
which will be you will have to choose between uh, two issues here. One is one object will be uh, one is sustainable to the other one is inclusion. So you, you want your virtual product to be either having sustainability features or it should be uh, focusing on inclusion, meaning uh, these will be adding uh, depth to your product. So those are important features. If you choose sustainability, for instance, you should ensure that the product promotes uh, environmental conservations, let's say, or if you pick inclusion, you should design your product to be accessible and usable by every user, diverse range of avatars or users. So these range from disabled people to gender, age, race differences. So th those are the issues that your uh, product will be uh, focusing on. Another important thing is we want every virtual product to be socially responsible. So you should be creating social value for your product. Uh, you can do it by uh, maybe collaborations with other virtual communities here, and you can learn how to create a social uh, responsible product, uh, and your product should be highlighting the social responsibility, uh, and that will help uh, your products appeal to. Another step will be to build a marketing plan uh, the marketing plan is important for your project because uh, till this part, you will already have a product idea, your business objectives will be definite, you will know who you are going to sell this product to, uh, and you will be already just work about sustainability or inclusion issues here, but now and social responsibility. But now the thing is, uh, if you do not communicate it to the potential customers you have here, that you, you will not be actually uh, accomplishing any success here. So the marketing plan will help you to promote your uh, virtual product uh, in the virtual environment. So uh, you will be in detail talking about which uh, communication channels you're going to use, how you're going to promote it, what will be your marketing objectives. So in the classes, we will be talking about this and we will start uh, building a marketing plan together and in your uh, with your team, you are going to continue building them. And then another step is to create an engaging experience. So, uh, so your product isn't just an uh, uh, an item, but it will also be. It can also deliver an experience to your customers, potential uh, customers. So uh, you should ensure that uh, you create user interactions as immersive and memorable, maybe. Uh, so uh, you will add interactive features to your product so that uh, users can uh, have different experiences with by using your product. So when coming to the at the end of the uh, semester, you know that you are going to present your project, but before that, you will have a display area. So you have to create a display area. You will have you will be showing um, your products how they can be used. Uh, and there, uh, we will be visiting your um, play the your, your areas where you we will be experiencing your product, interacting with it. So uh, those also will be the places where people will be able to uh, purchase your product. So uh, you will be uh, building a visually representative uh, area for your products. And then finally, at the end of the semester, you will be presenting your project, your project ideas, your whole project. Uh, so that will be uh, a virtual event organized uh, and you will be making presentations there. Uh, so you will see us as the potential investors or buyers of your products. So uh, you have to highlight uh, your unique selling proposition. So you, the value you deliver and uh, the impact you will be creating by uh, your virtual product. So uh, the thing is, please do not forget that uh, a successful uh, virtual product uh, will be demanding uh, a lot of creativity, uh, a market demand, market understanding, and uh, a little bit of technological know-how. So it's not it's about creating value, and it's not just for individual users, but for the virtual community over here. Um, also, uh, next week, I will be, we, as, a, as a team, we will be uh, showing you, uh, we have a rubric uh, for this final project. So how, how we grade your projects and what are we expecting uh, from the projects uh, will be just written in a rubric uh, and we will be sharing it with you next week. So you will see the gra grading criteria and so on. Uh, and they will include uh, criteria like uh, 
creativity, teamwork, effort, presentation skills. So they will all be graded. Uh, so this is mostly all for the 